This is Public Occurrences, both foreign and domestic. And now your host, Michael O'Fallon. I'd like you to think back to the classic film, The Wizard of Oz. If you remember, the story has Dorothy, the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, the Cowardly Lion, and her dog Toto off to see the Wizard of Oz, the wonderful Wizard of Oz, because of the wonderful things that he does. And Dorothy had found herself in Oz, swept up by a tornado from her native Kansas and drop down on top of the Wicked Witch of the East. She takes the ruby slippers and departs down the Golden Road to try to get help from the wonderful Wizard of Oz. And she is told that the Wizard of Oz will be the one that can get her back home to Kansas. Along the way, she is challenged by the Wicked Witch of the West, who wants to avenge her sister and take back her ruby slippers. Of course, along the way, she meets the Scarecrow, who believes that he is brainless. She meets the Tin Man, who doesn't believe he has a heart. And she meets the Cowardly Lion, who is afraid of his own shadow. And through several challenges, Dorothy, the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Cowardly Lion end up, finally, making it through all of these challenges they finally end up at the gates of the magnificent, modern, amazing city of Oz, the home of the wonderful Wizard of Oz. Despite the witch's attempts to stop them with sleeping spells and other magic, Dorothy, the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Cowardly Lion end up at the magnificent, modern, amazing city of Oz. And all of them are awestruck at the magnificence of Oz, walking through the stunning grand modern architecture, down the massive hallways with uniform military, and eventually reach the wizard, who appears as a giant ghostly head, with steam and fire around him as he speaks. The wizard is grand. The wizard is all-powerful. The wizard is big. He belches fire and smoke with every word. And Dorothy and the others are small. They are very small and insignificant compared to the magnificence and power of the wizard. And with his booming voice and with smoke and fire all about, the wizard agrees to grant their requests if they bring him back the witch's broomstick. And they were up to the challenge, including the challenge of eventually defeating and eliminating the powerful Wicked Witch of the West and taking her broom, all to bring back to the all-powerful Wizard of Oz. So they returned to Oz to bring the grand and great wizard of Oz the broom that he said would be the fair exchange for the great wizard to grant their requests. But then something happens. Even though Dorothy, the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, had done what Oz told them to do, had done what the powerful wizard of Oz had told them would be the thing that they would have to do in order for him to grant their wishes when they come back with the broom. The powerful Wizard of Oz refuses to keep his word. He denies their requests. And with his voice booming and belching fire and smoke, he refuses to keep his word. But Dorothy and her team object. They're getting over their fear a little bit. But they object, saying, If you really are great and powerful, you would keep your promises. 
And then the great and mighty Oz replied, Do not arouse the wrath of the great and powerful Oz. Kind of like when Joe Biden said, if you remember about a month ago, that, you know, hey, I'm losing my patience with you. Anyway, and just as the powerful and mighty Oz was saying, do you presume to criticize the great Oz, you ungrateful creatures? Well, Dorothy's little dog, Toto, trots over to a curtain on the side, takes the curtain by his teeth, and pulls back the curtain to reveal an old, frail man pulling strings and levers, pretending to be the great and powerful Oz. And as the old man panics, he screams back into his microphone, Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain! With eventually Dorothy and the others saying, You're a very bad man. Well, the old man, the fake wizard, relents. And when the scarecrow is angry, when he said that he will never have the brain that he was promised, the wizard wises up and states, quote, Where I come from, people go to universities and get diplomas, and when they get out, they think great thoughts. And so the old man wizard gives the scarecrow a diploma, and he instantly becomes a mathematician. You see, because it was the scarecrow who thought he was helpless and brainless that actually devised the way in which they would foil the witch and other such things. He actually had the brains all along. But he had told himself that he was incapable. He told himself that he needed others to do his thinking. You see, the Scarecrow didn't need the Wizard of Oz. And the Wizard of Oz is just an old man belching fire and smoke. Well then, the old man wizard turned to the lion and explained that in his world, veterans would take out their uniforms once a year and parade, but that they had no more courage than that of the lion who had just literally saved Dorothy. So the lion didn't need the wizard either. He had the courage all along. Then the wizard turned to the tin man, who had wanted a heart, but he, in reality, had the biggest heart of all, and was loved by all. You see, the tin man didn't need the wizard at all. Pretty much to sum it up, the wizard was useless. The wizard was an old man who had convinced everyone that he was all-powerful. The wizard had convinced everyone that he was all-knowing. The wizard had convinced everyone to fear him. But all he was, all the wizard really was, was an old, tired man. A carnival barker, a useless old man pulling strings and levers to make himself look powerful. And who actually had the power? The ones that had all the power to defeat the witch. The ones that had all the power, the intelligence, the emotional drive to make the changes that the wizard couldn't make were Dorothy, the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Lion. Heck, the wizard had the four of them run out to kill the witch and steal her broom. He couldn't even do that himself. They should have thought for a second, like, well, hold on a second. If we have to go and kill the witch, if we have to go and bring back her broom, well, what makes us powerful? Because he wasn't powerful enough to do it himself. The old man wizard leveraged the hopes and the fears of Dorothy and her team to have Dorothy the Scarecrow and the Tin Man and the Lion do the dirty work for him. And the other thing is, is that he was always completely unable to grant them any of their wishes. You see, that was just a canard. The promises that he gave them 
that he would grant the wishes, which he was unable to do, he used that as leverage to get what he wanted. He had no power at all. There was no reason to fear him. At all. Because, in truth, Dorothy, the Tin Man, the Scarecrow, and the Lion were the ones with all of the power. Far more powerful than that of the magnificent and mighty Wizard of Oz. He was absolutely useless. He made them promises that he couldn't keep. To just make Dorothy and her team respond in fear, trembling in obedience. For some promise that he was never going to be able to fulfill. You see, the wizard was all smoke and mirrors. Dorothy's team had the power. The only power that the wizard had over them was his magnificent propaganda and fear. The wizard looked so overwhelming. The wizard looked so powerful. But the four yellow brick road team members were the ones that had the ability and the power to change everything. I hope your wheels are turning right now. I hope you are realizing that this grand story of the Wizard of Oz is a potent metaphor. That so much of what we think we can't change, so much that we think we can't handle on our own, that so much of the grand smoke and mirrors is just that. Smoke and mirrors to put you in your place and make sure that you feel small. That you think that you can't do anything about what is happening around you. That you have to put all of your trust in the ever-present, all-powerful government that will take care of everything. Oh, those technocrats, they have the answers. And the answer is, give them total control. And then what will happen is they will fix nothing. They will make life worse for you. They will break all of their promises. Remember 15 days to slow the spread? That's all we need. Anthony Fauci was the Wizard of Oz. Joe Biden is the Wizard of Oz. The entire government, the World Economic Forum, the UN. They are wizards of an imaginary Oz. The truth is, they fear you. They fear us. They fear truth. The wizards of our day fear us. And that is why, when just a few moms and dads start showing up at a school board meeting to demand that critical race theory be taken out of the curriculum, demand that homoerotic material be taken out of their children's school books, demand that non-revisionist history and Marxist propaganda be taken out of the curriculum being taught to their children, when just a few thousand of these moms and dads start showing up, it changed everything. Because the parents demanded change. The parents knew what they were talking about. They mostly knew what they were talking about because of James Lindsay and New Discourses. That's the truth. Because that's all it really takes. It takes telling the truth and standing up and refusing to stand down. And if you want to see how quickly the authoritarians pull out the menacing and Orwellian weapons of the FBI and the Justice Department, do you want to see how long it will take before they break down your door? Do you want to see how long it will take before the New York Times and the Washington Post and other Marxist propaganda organizations begin to write hit pieces about you? Well, if you want to see how quickly this can happen, well, then stand up and speak out against the totalitarian machine. Not just a few Facebook posts. Not just in your own communities on Facebook or in Signal, where it's private. Well, it's not really private on Facebook, by the way. Because that's what they want you to do. They want you to form a little community and not affect the rest of everyone around you. If you really want to change things, and if you want to see the wrath of the Wizard of Oz coming after you, we'll start showing up at city council meetings and object. Start showing up at school board meetings and object. Start showing up at meetings at your church and demand that they stop with their infusion of neo-Marxism and postmodernism in the church. Stand up and refuse to lock down. 
Stand up and refuse to play these stupid games of command and control by those that seek to have us in a never-ending wheel of subjugation. And that's about to start again right now. Just try it. The wizards of our day, with all the smoke, fire, and mirrors, with them pulling levers behind the curtains. You know, the Joe Bidens, the Nancy Pelosi's, the Bill de Blasio's, the Klaus Schwab's, the many Hitlers in Australia and New Zealand. They are the wizards of Oz today. You mix in the other co-leaders of the new technocracy. You know, people like Mark Zuckerberg, Larry Fink, Eric Schmidt, Jack Dorsey, Anthony Fauci especially. All wizards of Oz themselves, insisting that we must say and agree with the lie. Follow the orders that are sourced in the lie. And if we don't, the all-powerful wizards of Oz will breathe fire and belch smoke. Belch fire and smoke like Anthony Fauci did yesterday in an interview when he said, quote, Anybody who's looking at this carefully realizes there's a distinct anti-science flavor to this. So if they get up and criticize science, nobody's going to know what they're talking about. But if they get up and really aim their bullets at Tony Fauci, well, people can recognize that there's a person there. So it's easy to criticize. But they're really criticizing science because I represent science. End quote. <laughs> Anthony Fauci is actually saying that he is science, that he is the sole representative of all the consensus of science. And if you disagree with his meandering, ever-changing, politically charged decisions that he changes as soon as the opportunity to lock down and completely change the nation is in his hands, then you, you, Dorothy, you, Tin Man, you, Lion, you, Scarecrow, then you are anti-science. And now we have the next round of the oligarchical technocracy who are about to unleash the next round of mandatory lockdowns, crushing economic consequences, and the continued division between the vaccinated and the unvaccinated, creating the class of the filthy, disease-ridden, even though they are not infected with the virus, by the way, they're completely healthy, to create the population of these people that are unvaccinated, these awful people to blame for the transmission and infection rate. Oh, it's their fault. And finally, and I was waiting for this to happen eventually, and it has now happened, what has finally broken out all over the world is the largest mass protest ever seen in the history of the world against the wizards. And these people that are part of this protest, and there are millions of them everywhere, they understand that our liberty is at stake, and they are demanding no more lockdowns for the unvaccinated. They are demanding the end of this whole scheme of mandatory vaccine passports. They are demanding that we cease, stop this whole idea of not allowing the unvaccinated to go into bars, to go into restaurants, to be able to travel. They're demanding, demanding the end of all of it. The protests have been massive, by the way, in the millions of people that are turning out in Rome, Paris, London, Frankfurt. And I mean, folks, Frankfurt, Frankfurt. I've spent more time in that city than I care to admit, and it has a very compliant population. But they are now protesting. Where else? Dublin, Turin, Croatia, Guadalupe, Melbourne, Sydney, Perth, millions and millions of people saying no. Millions and millions of people who are not going to sit by as this stealthy fifth generation war is raged against their liberties, their freedoms. As a matter of fact, it's against them. Millions and millions of people that are refusing to be traced and tracked for the rest of their lives by a totalitarian global government using the virus as the lever. Millions and millions of Dorothy's. Tin men, scarecrows, and a whole bunch of lions who realize that this is the time, that this is the moment, that we can't wait to be encroached on any further by these tyrants. And it is gaining steam. And the governments can't slow it down. The only way that they could slow it down is either by more and more violence or more lockdowns. That's the only way the government can stop it. In other words, the governments that are in power would have to pull out all of the massive force that they have to quell the people who are now demanding their liberties back. The people who are demanding that the government stay out of their own personal decisions in regards to their choice. Who are demanding that the government and giant tech companies respect their privacy. 
And who is in this great crowd of protesters? Well, that's the real problem for the technocrats. This is the big problem for all the folks in the governments. World Economic Forum, let's say, the United Nations. Do you know who's in this crowd? Well, it's conservatives, liberals, mothers, fathers, teenagers, college-age folks, black, white, Latino, aboriginal, Asian, straight, gay, and otherwise, all demanding that this end and this end now. So guess what, Grand Wizards of the Great Social and Society Project, those of you that have been trying to use DEI to create an intersectional world, guess what you've actually done? Well, we have achieved grassroots, organic intersectionality. Real intersectionality that was forced by your schemes and your plans. Real intersectionality that wasn't pushed by Baptist seminaries and the Gospel Coalition. A real organic intersectionality of all peoples of all genders and ethnicities united against the tyrants in the government, the tyrants at the World Economic Forum, the tyrants at the United Nations, the tyrants in the corporations, the tyrants in the universities, the tyrants in the tech companies. And what do they want? They want all of you out. They're done with this. All the propaganda in the world would not change their minds, coming up with the next virus variant. And so, of course, what do the wizards collude to do? Well, the wizards have decided to belch fire and smoke and speak with a unified, booming voice. Omicron. Yeah, that's the ticket. Start creating the same fear and panic that you did back in March of 2020. And they're trying to sell this giant infusion of fear, even though the scientists and physicians in South Africa say that the variant is more transmissible, but less severe. And remember, just because someone did a test for a virus in South Africa doesn't mean that the virus started in South Africa. There was just a test in South Africa. The strain of COVID might have already spread to every continent months ago, just like COVID-19 did back in 2019 and early 20. If you go back to the causes of things and listen to what I said actually in March, of 2020 in virus lag measures. That's the name of the episode. I explained this. And nobody, I, I, can't, I can't imagine that nobody actually didn't see this coming. Because COVID-19 didn't just appear in the state of Washington because of a test in the Northwest. Tests do not create viruses. Tests show that viruses are already here. And there could be, just like COVID-19 two years ago, there could be a million people, hundreds of thousands of people, that already have this particular strain of COVID-19. And the strong evidence that is now all over the place is that the vaccines did not prevent anyone from catching or transmitting COVID-19. As a matter of fact, in many cases, there are more hospitalizations of the vaccinated by way of COVID-19 than the unvaccinated. And people are starting to pick up on this. Especially people that have been vaccinated, that followed the rules, that did what they were told by the Wizard of Oz. They understand, wow, well, the vaccine never really worked and I still caught COVID and man, it was rough. It was really tough. But I did what I was told to do, so... I guess they're saying it might have been much worse or whatever. Well, when this starts to get around, when this news starts to spread everywhere, that you got vaccinated, but you caught COVID-19 anyway, as a matter of fact, you spread it to your whole family. Well, people start to figure this out. So now you have to come up with Omicron. And what you say is that Omicron is evading the, the, the current vaccine. So you got to get another vaccine. So what happens at that point is people go, oh, I see what you're doing. You're going to blame my catching this thing on Omicron, even though I followed your rules and I got vaccinated. And what you're going to say is that Omicron is getting around the vaccines and we've got to get another one. So you've got to get your third dose and your fourth dose and your fifth dose to avoid the next variant and so forth, even though everybody's catching COVID-19. So the wizards broke their promises. But the tyrants are going to start the fear mill. This morning, I've already had four push notifications of the Omicron variant showing up in Canada. Of an Omicron variant showing up in London. 
on the push notifications to my phone to make sure that I'm aware that I have to be afraid. And they're going to tell you every time Omicron appears in London or New York or Miami or Chicago or Canada, and they're going to try to lock down everything all over again. And you want to know why? Think about it. The reason they're going to do this is because they're losing. Because we have seen behind the curtain now, and we know that someone is putting on a grand show of propaganda. And everyone is now seeing what I have been warning about for years. That they are going to try to drive us into an enviro-communist oligarchical technocracy against our will. And the wizards are going to try to build their fake world around their fake crises. And they are going to demand that you submit. Now, see, understand, this is so much different than in early 2020. We were all told that we are going to get back to normal. Everybody knows now we're not going back to normal. They even told us that we're not going back to normal. So they are going to demand that you submit. Or else. And the problem is that every corporation, every government, every pharmaceutical company, every think tank, every evangelical Catholic and Muslim faith leader who has participated in this giant charade knew that when they took this giant step starting in March of 2020, that they crossed a bridge that was immediately burnt behind them. And they followed the Marcusean dreams of Klaus Schwab, Lady Rothschild, and Pope Francis off the cliff. Just like all the evangelicals followed Ed Stetzer, Al Mohler, and Tim Keller off the cliff. And there is no going back. And they know this. So now, when we've pulled back the curtain, they either double down, bring out the iron-fisted hand in a strong Bailey move, or they try to politic and mot their way out of this giant ideological and technical tower of Babel that they have built. And who is watching all this while we do this? Well, China is. And China is watching as the wizards of the West try to scramble to start locking down again after creating the largest display of true revolution in human history. And, just to top it off, the Jelaine Maxwell trial starts this week. And that could be very interesting. Because, guess who was with her? Oh, a lot of folks that we've been talking about. A lot of folks that are involved in this. A lot of folks that were using Epstein and Maxwell for a number of things. I mean, she was with the Pope. I mean, Epstein and Maxwell were very, very close to Bill Gates. And if mankind can stay together regardless of the violence, threats, and force brought against all of us by the wizards, if mankind can understand that now is the moment and begin to act proactively, if mankind together can come together in a real strong way to overcome the decades of plotting and planning of the grand wizards of woke communism, then we just might win. We may be able to overcome the censorship. We may be able to overcome all the united corporations and tech companies that want to play God with their new AI tools. We may Overcome all of those united to end the sovereignty of nations and create their artificially intelligent, algorithmic, supranational state. Because the future does not belong to the globalists. The future belongs to patriots. The future belongs to sovereign and independent nations who protect their citizens, respect their neighbors, and honor the differences that make each country unique. We must win. And we must, we must overcome the Wizards of Oz. Our own wizards of our globe. We have to pull back the curtains. We have to expose them for what they are. And we have to stand up with courage. Now is the moment. Now is the time. Don't allow them to do this to us again. Ever again. I'm Michael O'Fallon, and this has been Public Occurrences, both foreign and domestic.